Mr. Lal Gudikrishnan, Mr. Vimba, thank you very much for agreeing to do this interview for Sahapedia. Sahapedia, as you know, is an online encyclopedia on Indian arts and culture. And then we are very glad to do this interview with you to, <coughs> to do an elaborate interview on the workshop that you are doing. Mr. Krishnan, may I ask you to uh, give an introduction to the workshop that you are doing with Mr. Simmer on the violin making? and maybe you could explain why you feel the need to do a workshop like this. Yeah. Um, thank you, Mr. Muthu. Uh, it's been a pleasure, our pleasure to be a part of this. <coughs> Violin has been in the Indian music system. It has been assimilated and adapted. Uh, see, uh, for a period of 200 years mm -hmm. uh, during the British rule this was assimilated into the system we have four people who have been accredited with the job of Indianizing this Western instrument Varaha Paya Balaswami Dikshitar Vadivelu and Krishna Swami Bhagavatar we are uh, the art of violin making, Mr. Yeah. James will uh, tell, has been perfected by Stradivarius mm -hmm. and uh, not much has been done mm -hmm. to improve it any further. Mm -hmm. And we have taken the same violin mm -hmm. and Indianized. Mm -hmm. I just can uh, ask yeah. Mr. Jim to play it the Western way and I... Oh. I like, yeah. <laughs> How the Indianization has yeah, been so and done to adapt the way. Well, yeah, <laughs> Actually, it's a pretty well known uh, Mr. Baluswamy learned from an Irish fiddler. Uh -huh. So uh, I'm, I'm not a classical violinist. Okay. I'm, I'm a fiddler. Okay. So uh, I don't get to say I'm a violinist. Mm -hmm. I'm, I always have to say I'm a fiddler. fiddler. And so uh, I'll play you a, a tune in the Irish manner. Mm -hmm. See, it's very different than Western classical. Yeah, it, 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 I, you mean to say this is one of the uh, posture yeah. is one of the ways of uh, yeah. changing the posture is one because of the ways of uh, Indianization. Uh, Indian music uh, is vocal based, and uh, what we do is to simulate the human voice. Okay. And violin is a phenomenal instrument with great potential. Okay. We have so many advantages of uh, bringing this instrument into our system because. We don't have the concept of absolute pitch. Mm -hmm. Each one chooses the pitch that he or she is comfortable with. Okay. A female vocalist can choose the tonic or the pitch to be G. Mm -hmm. And we can tune the violin to G. Okay. And if it were to be a male vocalist, it mm -hmm. could be as low as C. Okay. And we can still tune it. And violin is as much mm -hmm. a solo instrument as it and can be an accompanying okay. instrument. Mm -hmm. It can literally reproduce any nuance that mm. is sung or played in any other instrument. Mm -hmm. So we have the gamakas, uh -huh. the graces as we call it, yeah. as the essential ingredient of Indian music. Uh -huh. And this can be best played mm -hmm. when you hold it this way because it facilitates the upward and downward mm -hmm. movements. Mm -hmm. Could be a little bit jerky and uncomfortable uh -huh. when you stand up and play. So ah. so <laughs> it's as though a human voice is oh, yeah. singing. So 
traditionally the veena and the flute used to be the accompanying instrument in Indian South Indian music. concerts. Mm -hmm. But after the advent of violin, it has become an ubiquitous instrument. You find it in any concert, uh, South Indian concert, be it a vocal concert or an instrumental concert. And mm. you find violin as a solo instrument also. Okay. And it is also found in the Hindustani music and uh, now to talk about uh, the film industry yeah. where mm -hmm. we have so many violins. Mm -hmm. And uh, the unfortunate thing about the scenario here is we don't have enough repair skills. Mm -hmm. The craftsmen, mm -hmm. unfortunately, they don't have the facility of getting themselves trained in a college uh -huh. in the West. They have specialized mm -hmm. colleges teaching the art of violin making and uh, mm -hmm. repair facilities. Mm -hmm. And I should say this uh, drawback was realized and felt even in the 60s mm -hmm. because in 1965 mm -hmm. when foreign tours were not that common, my mm -hmm. father was invited to perform in the Edinburgh Music Festival mm -hmm. uh, when he went to a company with one Palgat KV Narayan Swami mm -hmm. sir along with uh, Sri Palgat Manir and his son Sri Palgat Rajamani. Mm -hmm. At the time, mm -hmm. a senior violinist, mm -hmm. veteran violinist, Mr. Papa Venkatramaya, mm -hmm. he had given his violin mm -hmm. to my father mm -hmm. to take it to London and get it repaired in Hill and Sons. Mm -hmm. Most famous violin house. Uh -huh. Yes. Uh -huh. And uh, my father meticulously got it done. Mm -hmm. So the situation is not any better even mm -hmm. now. You mean to say from the 1960s until now there hasn't been a, even a repair shop here to do the... Uh, the the uh, situation might even be worse uh -huh. <laughs> because since then uh -huh. Uh, the, the violin uh, is being, uh, on some level, systematically destroyed by repair people. Yes. Uh -huh. um, <laughs> it's uh, without proper knowledge of the tools uh -huh. and the methods mm -hmm. of preservation. Mm -hmm. We basically use m methods of conservation mm -hmm. and preservation that you might find in a museum. Uh -huh. Correct. So. <coughs> If uh, you don't understand the way the violin is made, why everything uh, is mm -hmm. made the way it is, mm -hmm. then uh, there will be this haphazard approach to the violin. Uh -huh. And uh, also, uh, it's very important in, in our method mm -hmm. to use what you would call animal glue. Mm -hmm. We call it the hide glue or bone glue. Mm -hmm. and. Uh, this glue is very important. It's the very same glue that was used by Stradivarius mm -hmm. and even before him, all his predecessors. Mm -hmm. Since the year 1550, mm -hmm. only hide glue has been used properly uh -huh. for the violin. Uh -huh. And the reason for this is because mm -hmm. unlike, say, guitar, mm -hmm. with the guitar they have a big sound hole. Okay. Repairman can go inside with his hand and mm -hmm. do things like this. But uh, for us, the violin is necessary to be able to dismantle it. Okay. Um, my own violin, mm -hmm. uh, I could take 15 minutes mm -hmm. and uh, lay it apart and put it on the table in about 15 different parts uh -huh. without damage. Okay. The hide glue allows us to dismantle the violin with no damage mm -hmm. and clean up. Hmm. Whereas these uh, synthetic glues are stronger than the wood itself. Mm -hmm. So when we try to open, mm -hmm. it uh, it actually creates a hazard for the violin itself. Mm -hmm. You may it's easy to break it further, mm -hmm. and uh, with the use of these uh, synthetic glues, like say your favicol, favicol mm -hmm. or uh, what do you call it, araldit, the violin is glued together so strongly. Mm -hmm that when it inevi inevitably must be repaired, mm. only more damage will be caused, oh, you see. Wow. Oh. So uh, our method is really quite important. Yeah. And we actually don't have any idea mm -hmm. how old the violins can become. Mm -hmm. Because the very first violins that were ever made around about the year 1550, mm -hmm. 1550, mm -hmm. 
are still in common use today uh -huh. due to these careful methods of restoration. I see. Uh -huh. with, the, with the use of these synthetic glues, uh -huh. the violin might survive only 50 years. Mm. Then you have to throw it away. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, uh -huh. uh, as I told you, it has been two, over 200 years since mm. violin mm. came into this Indian music scenario. Mm. And we very well know that the repair facilities do not exist here. Mm. Even though in the north we are making some violins, mm. there are uh, uh, people making and selling it. Mm. But the greatest dis disadvantage is mm. the right wood is not available. Uh -huh. Yes. Yeah. In uh, the west, they use maple and spruce. Maple and spruce. Mm -hmm. The best maple and spruce. Mm -hmm. The best maple comes from Bosnia, uh -huh. former Yugoslavia. Mm -hmm. And the best spruce tends to come from uh, Central Europe, mm -hmm. uh, Southern Germany, mm -hmm. Austria, mm -hmm. uh, areas like this. And where you see the old violin maker colonies, mm -hmm. for instance, Cremona, Mm -hmm. The ten greatest violin makers of all time mm -hmm. all lived and worked in Cremona. Uh -huh. And Cremona on a clear day is within sight of the Alps, uh -huh. right? The mountain range between mm -hmm. Italy and Germany. And just on the other side of the Alps is Mittenwald, the colony of violin makers there. So they, they lived in proximity to the wood source. Mm -hmm. And uh, <coughs> in, in India, the, it is a big problem that mm -hmm. the wood is quite simply not available. Mm -hmm. I believe that if India did not have to import every piece of wood for the violin, mm -hmm. that there would be a very lively violin making industry here today. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, the attempts have been very bravely made, mm -hmm. uh, but the woods that are used are more commonly used for instruments like the sarod, uh -huh or perhaps the veena, Sharangi, Sarangi. Sarangi, these kind of woods. They're a tropical hardwood, which is quite heavy. Uh -huh. yeah. <coughs> and it may not, uh, I don't know the uh, structural capabilities of these woods, mm -hmm. but they may not be as capable mm -hmm. of withstanding the tension mm -hmm. that the maple and spruce are. Withstanding, mm -hmm. what kind of a ten tension? Well, if you look at the violin, yeah. you'll see uh, nothing touches the top except the bridge. Yes. Uh, unlike the guitar, <laughs> unlike the guitar, the violin, the strings go up uh -huh. and down and they form this angle over the bridge mm -hmm. which pushes down. Now with soft gut strings, these are even more tense because they're a nylon string and, and steel will give almost double Mm -hmm. But the pressure coming down onto the top of this very small piece of maple is around a, at Western concert pitch will be around about 60 pounds. Hmm. Im imagine a large bucket of water uh -huh. sitting on top of this poor little yeah. piece of wood. Yeah, yeah, 60 pounds. Yeah. And so inside, hmm. you won't be able to see in the camera. We have a small piece of wood, six millimeters only. It's made of the same wood as the top of the violin. Mm -hmm. It's called the sound post. Mm -hmm. Now, the name in the original language of violin making, uh, Italian, for sound post, is anima. Mm -hmm. Anima, yeah. in Italian, it's a union word. It means soul. Yeah, yeah. Your soul, yeah. atman. Yeah, atman. It's, so it's the atman of the violin. Yeah, yeah. Beautifully named. Uh -huh. yeah. Very appropriate. And uh, the reason for this is because properly, it's not glued. Hmm. It's only cut to fit and it stands in there hmm. easily and we can go inside and move it around. Hmm. Now when you have somebody who doesn't understand, hmm. when they start moving it and they move it carelessly, they cause damage to the interior of the violin, hmm. in particular here in, in the top which is a softer wood. Hmm. And uh, this damage cannot be seen from the outside, hmm. Hmm. but soon there's so much damage here that a proper sound post cannot be put in. Hmm. So a, a very complex patch is required on the interior of the instrument just hmm. to restore it. Hmm. It's quite difficult and quite costly. Mm -hmm. But nobody knows how to do that. Uh -huh. We've been teaching a bit of this technology mm -hmm. here. Mm -hmm. In the absence of a maple and spruce in India, what kind of a, what kind of a wood is uh, used for? Jackwood is basically used. Is it jackwood? Jack I, I don't know this wood. Uh, they make veenas out of it. Okay. Uh -huh. So, uh 
-huh. Whatever is available, they just try uh -huh. to make violence. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Out of it, which is not ideally suited, and that's why they are not very concert worthy. Uh -huh. At best, can be students violent. Mm -hmm. And uh, often the workmanship is very rough. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm one of my students here has his own violin. Mm -hmm. He's an Indian violin, mm -hmm. and uh, the interior has been carved, so it's it's extremely rough. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't follow the exterior of the violin, this curve. You mm. see, mm. we have this curve here. Yeah. That the reason this curve is such facilitates the cutting of the sound post, uh -huh. the anima. Okay. Right? But uh, they've given no thought to the fact that yeah. they're later they'll have to put a, a sound post in. Mm -hmm. So these are just simple practical matters that, mm. that make a big difference. You, but, but could you also say how this curve is achieved, the entire curve of the violin? This? Yeah. Uh, these are pieces of maple uh -huh. that are 1.2 millimeters thick. Okay. Only one point. Yeah, like yeah, yeah. Yeah, very thin. thin. And uh, we'll, we'll heat bend it over mm. a very hot iron. Uh -huh. uh, so first we make a form. Hmm. Very much like Stradivari, interior hmm. of the violin will be represented by a form uh, we use laminate wood. Hmm. And we set corner blocks hmm. to which these ribs are attached. Hmm. So first thing we do is we carve these corner blocks mm -hmm. and then we can glue hmm. the ribs, we call them, mm -hmm. onto these blocks. Once, once I've achieved that, mm -hmm. then I can take what we call the rib cage, in mm -hmm. other words, just the ribs, mm -hmm. and I can trace the outline of the violin mm -hmm. onto my wood. Mm -hmm. we, cu we cut out the outline, mm -hmm. right? And then uh, once the outline is cut out, the exterior will be carved and sculpted, if you will, mm -hmm. not pressed by yeah. heat, nothing like that. We take the tools and we carve it to assume this shape. Mm -hmm. Once the exterior is perfect, mm -hmm. then we can uh, take it and uh, hollow out the interior. Hmm. And we use the exterior shape as a reference for measuring against. Hmm. So it's, it's all quite exacting. Hmm. The uh, center of the violin between the F holes hmm. should be, depending on the length of the F hole, hmm. round about three millimeters only. Hmm. And in this part of the violin, hmm. only 2.5 millimeters. Mm -hmm. And on the back, because the high tension E string mm -hmm. transfers this tension mm -hmm. through the top, pushes out on the back, the center of the violin mm -hmm. must be around about 4.5 millimeters. Mm -hmm. Now we have here a violin, which is really quite a lovely violin, mm -hmm. that was repaired by somebody in India whose, yeah. whose name is written very big inside. <laughs> <laughs> This violin was 4.5 before. Uh -huh. This fellow has carved out the interior to about 1.7. Oh. So, of course, a big crack develops here. Uh -huh. hmm. So, we've had a very difficult time restoring this. Yeah. You see. Where did you learn violin making? I learned violin making in Germany uh -huh. in the times before the European Union. Uh -huh. So, uh, at the time in Germany, uh -huh. violin making was protected by the old world guilds. Hmm. Uh, they protected the making of beer, uh -huh. right? Yeah. <laughs> uh, Where in Germany? In Bavaria? No, uh, it actually, uh, Mr. Krishnan mentioned uh, these violin-making schools. Uh -huh. In Germany, you have the state-sponsored school of violin-making in Mittenwald. Mm -hmm. It's in the south on the border to Austria. Uh -huh. yeah. But also, because violin-making was very controlled, Mm. It was necessary to find a master mm. maker in the guild mm. who was a certified master. Mm -hmm. Then you could learn one on one with a master also in a shop. Mm -hmm. And uh, this was the method that I uh, was able to find. Mm. At the time, it was almost impossible to find a violin maker who would teach you. Mm -hmm. Mostly they kept it very secretive. So, in this workshop, also you import the same master one, -one, one to one relationship in the workshop also workshop training oh yes this was yeah. my this was my training mm -hmm. he needed somebody to work mm -hmm. i represented uh, very inexpensive labor <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, you know yeah. i wanted to learn so badly mm -hmm. 
he paid me all next to nothing, mm -hmm. but he gave me a room <laughs> which had no heat in the winter. Uh -huh. It was always cold. I sat with many blankets, mm -hmm. and uh, I slept on the floor. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and uh, my washroom was in the shop itself. Mm -hmm. I, I didn't even have a proper shower. Mm -hmm. So to, uh, <laughs> to get a nice warm shower every day, Which year was it this would have been 1980. Ah, 1980. 1980. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So to get a proper shower, mm -hmm. I joined the closest possible sporting facility, which was a kung fu school. <laughs> <laughs> so you learned kung fu and so the art of the violin making yes, together. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so whenever the violin here developed any problem, we would wait for a foreign trip to happen. Mm -hmm. It's like uh, a person getting sick in the village. Mm. He wouldn't. Uh, it's like a person who gets sick uh, while in a village. He wouldn't want to uh, go to a doctor in the village. He would wait to go to the city. So only such professionals can afford this. So I, this has been in the, at the corner of my mind. Mm -hmm that something should be done mm. to benefit the industry as a whole, not mm. just me. Mm. So Lal Gudi Trust, we mm. thought about it and uh, I was fortunate to meet Mr. James Wimmer probably in 2001 mm -hmm. in Santa Barbara mm -hmm. <coughs> through a student of mine, uh, Sharona Priyan. Mm. And uh, it is like uh, his interest and my interests, whatever he wanted to do ah. and I wanted to do mm -hmm. were matching. You had common objectives we had to do. common interest and so I yeah. made the best use of uh, Mr. James Humber and he's a wonderful teacher and who has the heart to mm -hmm. impart whatever he has learned mm -hmm. that is most important. Mm -hmm. And in 2013, mm -hmm. Lalgudi Trust took the first ever step to fly in, mm -hmm. uh, famous violin maker as uh, Mr. James Wimmer and he was kind Not enough, famous. <laughs> <laughs> you are very humble, <laughs> um, um, Mr. James Wimmer was kind enough to mm -hmm. come along with his mm. assistant uh, Alex mm. and uh, they, we had a 21 day workshop mm -hmm. uh, by which we uh, um, gathered some uh, craftsmen, local craftsmen who are professing to do some repair work here so that they could get the right knowledge from the right person mm. and uh, we don't have specialized tools here that concept is not there mm -hmm. right. the workbench concept mm -hmm. is not there mm -hmm. we got it made and uh, Mr. James was kind enough to purchase those tools mm -hmm. and bring it with him and we gave it for free to the participants mm -hmm. and uh, apart from that uh, we gave the uh, participants a stipend amount also because they had to close their shops and uh, some incentive apart from I don't know if they mm -hmm. really know the value of uh, yeah. what they are getting because yeah. it is totally unthinkable and uh, nobody ever has done this sort of workshop in India till date and we have been doing it from 2013. 2015 we did it again and 2016. Yeah, you, and 14-day uh, workshop. This this year Kalakshetra has uh, come forward to co-sponsor it. Very beautiful. Very beautiful venue and, uh, mm. and uh, people are really benefiting out of it and uh, as he said... Uh, Before we go into the participants yeah. and the benefits of the workshops, uh, could you please elaborate on the workbench and the tools and what exists here and what do not exist here? Maybe well, the tools should be able to exist here. Okay. What we need is to find tool makers who are interested in making these tools. Uh -huh. Today, we use basically the very same tools as used by Stradivarius in Italy 250 years back. Okay. So India has become quite a modern country. Yeah. It must be possible to make these tools in India. Mm. 
but the interest has not been there. Mm -hmm. And we encourage the students to go find engineers, go find tool makers, mm -hmm. go find the person who casts the temple bells to make some of these tools we need, mm -hmm. things like this. And so this is very important. We try to impart this knowledge to the students. Please photograph the tools, measure carefully. Mm -hmm go to the file maker, ask for special files to be made. Mm -hmm. uh, but th this has really kind of been a problem because we have to bring everything in. Mm -hmm. And you know, these tools are quite expensive in the West mm -hmm. to set up uh, with just the tools for basic repair. Mm -hmm. Might cost me around about $10,000 US, you mm -hmm. see. Because they're specialty tools, there's not a big easy oh, market yeah. for them. Now about the workbench, mm -hmm. uh, the workbench, in, in German we call it the Hobelbank, mm -hmm. it's, it's made actually for heavy planing, mm. right? So if you have some uh, flimsy table mm -hmm. and you try to hook a piece of wood to the table, mm -hmm. you'll walk all over the room going here and there while pushing the plane. Mm -hmm. So the, the, the workbench is, is very heavy. Mm. You can work you can do very heavy work on the workbench. Mm -hmm. the, the carving of a cello, for instance, mm -hmm. is, is very physically strenuous work. Mm -hmm. So we need the, the workbench to hold the piece solidly. Mm -hmm. And uh, it has various devices for mm -hmm. holding in different ways. Mm -hmm. So it's really quite central to the workshop. Mm -hmm. And uh, um, Mr. James has uh, consciously planned it in such a way that he impacts on-the-job training. Mm -hmm. Uh, real uh, violins, cellos mm. and violas have been prepared and so that uh, all the craftsmen not only know the art of violin repair, they can handle a cello, they can handle uh -huh. viola. Uh -huh. yes. That's a wonderful thing. Uh -huh. yes. Who are the participants of the workshop since 2013? Well, uh, my goal is to train what we would call tradesmen. Mm -hmm people who are not necessarily uh, academically trained, mm -hmm. who are doing the work of uh, cabinet making or carpentry, mm -hmm. and who will have some of these woodworking skills already. Mm -hmm. So this has been my focus. Mm -hmm. uh, and we have a couple of very good, mm -hmm. they, they understand exactly what I mean mm -hmm. when we uh, use our tools. Mm -hmm. They're already very handy with their hands and with the tools. Mm -hmm. We're, we're not, violin making is not a big intellectual activity. Mm -hmm. It's mostly a simple woodworking activity. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, many violin makers are not even musicians. Mm -hmm. There's no written record at all of Stradivarius himself ever playing the violin. Mm -hmm. And uh, none of my teachers were able to play. I'm the only one who plays this fiddle. Mm -hmm. and, uh, but the naming of the parts of the violin it's very intellectual for yeah. anima for instance <laughs> anima yes. yes this is italian uh -huh. yeah in english we call it the sound post mm. in german the word for the sound post is stimme uh -huh. die stimme uh -huh. means the voice ah. oh. we were talking about the indianization of the violin you talked about the posture Absolutely. but what are the other aspects of the indianization that the major thing now uh, is the tuning uh -huh. we have uh, modified the tuning to mm -hmm. suit our system of music. See, the Western tuning is starts the fifth, then it's fifth, one, all the way all up. All fives, all fifths. All fives, in intervals of five. Uh -huh. But we have done it like the tonic and the fifth, tonic and the fifth. The same two notes will be repeated in the higher octave, see. That's how we tune it. So this tuning facilitates uh, traversing through the octaves and uh, playing our gamakams very easily. So that's a yes. brilliant brainwave of somebody who did it. Also, mm -hmm. when you change the saw from uh, to different pitches, the fingerings will not change. Mm -hmm. Yeah. In the Western manner of tuning, mm -hmm. we never change the tuning of the violin, uh -huh. but we have 24 different keys, we call it. Mm. Each key will have a different flavor or, or, or mood, right? Even though it's the same scale, you might say Shankarabharanam, mm -hmm. in a different key, 
people have a different mood. Mm. So they like like this in Western music, mm -hmm. but all the fingerings change. Mm. So they, maybe sometimes you don't even use the open string mm. because the key is too difficult. Mm. So in this way, the, the violin will give an entirely different voice. Mm. Mm. And uh, my greatest desire is mm. People should get inspired. A lot of corporates mm. should get inspired. And we need not just one James Swimmer, but many of mm. such people yeah. so that the whole of India benefits mm. and we have good repair mm. person, craftsmen, wherein we can give our instruments with full confidence mm. and get it back in good shape. Yes. Mm -hmm. Our goal when repairing the violin is to give it back as if nothing ever happened. Yes. But in fact, uh, in many cases, the violin is already so damaged, mm. we have to give it back as if the uh, other fellow was never there in the first place. And this is very difficult. What is to be done for the future of violin making in India? Uh, Apart from uh, having a master mm. like... Yeah, we have to import the right wood and it has yeah. to be done in a, such a large scale so that it becomes feasible, economically feasible to compete with the Chinese violins which are yeah. flooding the market now. Yeah. So that is, uh, we have to do it with the support of some corporates or government yeah. yeah. sponsorship and definitely we have requisite skill here and awareness especially after Mr. James has come in, mm. people know at least what they should not be doing. Mm. So we have some excellent instruments. Like a glue is for one. Glue. One. one. Yeah. He'll be another, another. What other? Yeah, I always, uh, harp, I always harp on the glue. Glue. Okay. <laughs> glue. But uh, it, it is difficult because all the wood must be imported. Uh -huh. Now, uh, some of the wood is not too expensive. Mm. It's, it's graded out in price mm. by the actual the beauty of the wood. Mm. Uh, simple wood will have no tonal advantage, mm. or, or a beautiful wood has no tonal advantage mm. over simple wood. Mm. Uh, so, like Mr. Krishnan says, perhaps if, with a large enough industry, then the wood can be imported. My recommendation would do, probably be to get the wood from China. Mm. Because maple the, from China? Maple and spruce they have in China, oh. yeah. right? And they're, they're the next door neighbor practically. Mm. So it's much more practical to bring from there. Mm. Now the Chinese have a very good foothold in violin making now. Mm. They're very, very good craftsmen. Mm. They're very expert at making and innovating tools. Mm. And also they have a longer tradition uh, of, uh, violin making. of violin making. Uh, uh, now in China, in Shanghai, they have regular institutions for teaching violin mm -hmm. making. Mm -hmm. You know, so they've already well established and, and gotten the lead. <clears throat> and they're coming to India, which, uh, you know, on several, some level is not a bad thing. Mm -hmm. If uh, if the currently the level of inexpensive violins from China is not a very good violin. Mm -hmm. But if the quality can come up hmm. and still be affordable in India, this might be part of the solution. How about, how about graduating these workshops into an institute of violin making? Yeah, that can be done, uh, provided a lot of corporates and sponsors come forward to do similar types of uh, workshops. Hmm. But uh, another suggestion I have is to have a, start a college, hmm. a specialized college where the skill is impart, imparted and you invite professors or violin makers mm -hmm. from foreign countries. So yes. it becomes a regular curriculum mm -hmm. and it, it will be more yeah. systematic and yeah. we can have enduring benefit out of it. Uh, it can easily be done. We have so many management institutes, engineering colleges. Mm -hmm. Why not a violin uh, repair uh, college? Yeah. Right? Yeah. But and by even violin an institute that could impart training for making not only violin but all the string yes. instruments. Oh, yes. Yeah. Well, we have uh, in the uh, United States we have a school for violin making, but many of the students who come out maybe they don't find work in the U.S. Yeah. See, 
So they would be a good resource to bring to India for six months, one year, have them teach what they know here. Mm -hmm. Because my knowledge is only part of the knowledge. Mm -hmm. If somebody else comes, he will have a different approach, mm -hmm. but with uh, similar results, you see. So you get many, fa many different facets of the same diamond. Well, so continuing our, our conversation on the Indianization and the European making of the violin, how do you think that it would contribute to the making of violin in India, the European approach to violin? Well, uh, for instance, the way I learned was that you cannot be considered a competent violin repair person until you make a concert quality violin. Mm -hmm. Because if some part of the violin is broken and missing, you need to be able to replace it as if it were never missing. Mm -hmm. So how can you do this if you don't have these skills? Mm -hmm. Say the scroll, this yeah. piece is broken and missing. Mm -hmm. I can make another one in the, in the style of that maker and, and uh, put it back together mm -hmm. and then the varnishing we use to disguise mm -hmm. it, it will look like the old violin mm -hmm. so these are all skills that uh, need to be understood and made yeah but I, I took your point on the you see violin repair is about conservation and preservation yes that's the idea that you brought in in the very <coughs> first of our conversation beginning of our comment how do you respond to that in from the Indian situation say for instance if you're is your father's uh, violin is preserved, conserved in any way? Yes, that's why I'm doing this uh, workshop. Because leave alone uh, manufacturing fresh violins, mm -hmm. the British have left behind so many beautiful instruments in this country, the Portuguese. Yes. And uh, the least we can do it is to uh, conserve it, conserve it, and uh, make them live the full life mm. that is that it is entitled to. So we have to, right. we, uh, we should not be destroying it. Mm -hmm. Right. With, with proper restoration and preservation techniques, yeah. we don't know how long the violin can live. Maybe 500, 700, 1,000 years. We don't know, actually, because the first violins are still being used in the West 500 years later, almost. Yeah, that's a good note to finish our conversation. Thank you so much. Wonderful talk. For the Wonderful. Thank you, Mr. Murthy. <laughs>